Hey folks, Robbie was here. Just doing my weekly roundup and my top five. So the quote of the week this week is, everything that we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not a truth. And so this is from Marcus Aurelius. I've just been starting to get into his work. I want to read his book, Meditations. It's on my list. I haven't gotten into it yet, but uh, this guy was pretty smart. And if you just do a quick Google search of quotes from Marcus Aurelius, you'll see that there's some serious nuggets in his quotes. You'll probably be hearing his quotes in future uh, weekly roundups here on the channel. So check out his stuff if you're looking for one of those uh, ideas to kind of get your week started. Or, in my case, to, to end your week. <clears throat> so right now my kids are getting ready for their 4-H speeches. It's a really neat thing that 4-H encourages the 4-H kids to do. Both of my kids are in the canine 4-H club, which means that their focus is dog training. And every year they have to do this uh, speech. And so this year, Rowan is doing his speech on coyotes. And so in order to get prepared for it, he's reading a book called Coyote America, which is a really cool book. And I recommend reading it if you wanna learn a little bit about the natural history of coyotes. And Naomi is doing her speech on ticks, which is really interesting. And so she's been doing research on the diseases that ticks carry, which most of you probably know as Lyme disease is one of them, but also the birds that you can house on your acreage in order to get rid of ticks. And so I found this quick website. Uh, I learned a couple of things here. So quails, I didn't realize that they were uh, a bird that went after ticks, but uh, kind of makes sense. Uh, the cattle egret. Chickens, I think I knew that one. Guinea fowl, I definitely knew that. Naomi was just telling me the other day that one guinea fowl will eat up to 4,500 ticks per year. That's assuming you've got ticks and, you know, maybe it's double that, maybe it's half of that, but basically they're tick, tick magnets, tick machines. Um, they're also really cool looking birds and apparently you can eat their eggs and you can also eat their, uh, eat them for meat. Um, and I ended up finding a podcast last night that was talking about the fact that you can train these birds. And the woman was saying that she uses her um, guinea fowl for um, therapy birds for autistic children, which is kind of cool. And so she's got them trained to a bell. And so when she rings the bell, they all come running forward in expectation of getting some food, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, actually, just a couple of other things. Guinea fowl are uh, free range birds. Uh, they'll walk up to a mile away from where they live at night and so they have a very very large range which makes them quite different than chickens and that's one of the reasons that if you have them on your property that they're going to go and attack those ticks but they'll also go after other bugs so guinea fowl are definitely going to be in the future on our acreage uh, ducks will actually eat ticks as well which is kind of cool wild turkeys partridge Roadrunners, I wish we had some of these around us. I've never seen one. I don't think that they live in this area. Woodpeckers, um, oxpecker, and that's it. So if you've got ticks on your property and you're trying to prevent yourself from or reduce the risk of getting Lyme disease, you may want to uh, either increase habitat on your property for some of these wild birds or get some of these domesticated birds and let them take care of them for you. Okay, the other thing that came across my feed this week, which I thought was really interesting, was this video on endocrine disruptors. And so if you're interested in optimizing your testosterone or estrogen or any of the other hormones that we depend upon, you're gonna wanna watch this. This is a video with a, a neat illustration on it uh, given by a professor of uh, endocrine research. And it was absolutely shocking to watch this. So it is a 40 minute commitment. So it's a bit more time than, you know, the typical 10 minute YouTube video, but uh, it just blew my mind. And, and one of the facts that she talks about in this video is how uh, male testosterone has been dropping between one and 2.6% per year for the foreseeable past. And this is crazy. Uh, I mean, this has massive implications on, if you're raising children. Um, it has massive societal implications. Uh, this explains some of the reasons that uh, it's getting harder and harder to get pregnant uh, and, and have children. Um, and so, yeah, wild. And so basically the, the, they're surmising that the drop in testosterone is the result of all the plastic bottles, 
a lot of the fragrances that we use in our soaps and also in our um, deodorants and all of our body products. Um, potentially the herbicides and pesticides that are sprayed on our food and that are also in aerosol form in the air. Uh, a lot of the toxins and pollutants that are around us. And so it's worth understanding this stuff and trying to make any adjustments that you can in the water that you drink and the containers that you use and how you store your food. Another really strong reason, in my opinion, to grow your own food as well. So if you're interested in this, I'll leave a link in the description down below. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. I'm currently going back and trying to increase the breadth of knowledge that I have in ecology. And so I found this really cool course that's totally free on YouTube. And it's all about uh, ecology based upon Odom's work. And so I'll leave a link down below uh, in the show notes so you can follow along on this course if you're interested in in getting buffed up on ecology. I think that ecology is one of those keystone bits of data or knowledge that will help you if you choose to, to go down this path in setting up your property. Um, having knowledge and how ecosystems function is probably the most powerful superpower you can have in understanding how to design ecosystems that support human habitat. So take a look at this if you're looking at trying to get buffed up on ecology as well. I think you'll find that it's great value. It's free. You just have to commit your time to it. And I'd be curious to know any thoughts or insights that you have as a result of consuming this particular course. Okay, lastly, if you're looking for a really short kind of inspirational video, uh, this is one of my favorite videos of all time. It's only a minute and 30 seconds. It's a rabbi talking about how lobsters grow. And basically, here's the, the short Cole's notes of it, but basically lobsters uh, grow their shell, but once their shell's grown, their shell doesn't grow with them. So they continue to grow inside of their shell until they reach a point that they uh, cannot no longer live inside the shell that they currently have. And so they'll break out of that shell and then they have to grow their shell again. And so he talks about this in the context of what it means to grow as a person. And at times we find ourselves under very large amounts of stress, uh, either at work or in our families or dealing with all the global craziness that's going on right now. And it, it can get really uncomfortable. It can feel like you've got a lot of pressure and that's just a sign that you're growing. And as a result of that uh, growth and that pressure, you end up cracking your shell open and you have to grow a new shell. And so uh, it's a really lovely metaphor as to how humans grow. And when you feel like you're under this type of pressure, you can kind of relate back to this story about the lobster. So if you're feeling like times are crazy and you're under a little bit of pressure and you've got uncertainty in your life and you're not really sure how to manage it, take a watch at this video. I think you'll find that it creates a bit of calm in your life and you'll find some solace and, uh, and it's an interesting metaphor to keep in mind when you're going through these periods in your life. So take a look at it. And then the last thing that I wanted to leave you guys with is uh, I lost my dad a couple years ago and um, I've been getting ready to uh, take my son through his rites of passage. I'm not sure what that's going to mean as of right now. Uh, he's turning 13 next year. And I've been trying to think about what sorts of things um, I wish that my father had told me before he passed. And that's kind of level one, but level two has been, you know, wondering like, who are the elders that are still around me right now that have a life's worth of knowledge and um, to whom I haven't gone and, and explicitly asked, like, what are the top three to 10 lessons that uh, you've learned in your life that if you could crystallize them or put them down on paper, you would give to the people around you uh, who are trying to figure life out for themselves. And so I've started formulating a list of people that I want to go and ask this of, and I want to document it. Um, for one, because I've never really had my own rites of passage. And so I've been trying to contemplate, like, what does it mean for me to go through that? Um, because I probably should figure out what that looks like for myself before I send my, my son through it. Um, also, there may be nuggets in there that I want to share with my son. And when I think about my life right now in my 40s, um, I finally feel now that I'm starting to get a grasp on life. Like it's, I know it sounds like a crazy thing to say, but as I kind of relive my 20s and my 30s, 
uh, and kind of condense the lessons that I've had in those decades uh, and start understanding where I am in the world and what my place is and, you know, some of the things that I think I should try and achieve before I croak. Uh, I keep wondering, like, what are the people in their 60s and their 70s and their 80s and their 90s um, what have they figured out? What are the things that they've reflected upon in their earlier decades? And I probably should start going out and asking some of these folks what they've figured out. And maybe there's some hacks or some, some knowledge that will help me to navigate the next decades ahead with a little bit more grace uh, than I did maybe in my 20s and my 30s. So uh, this kind of ties into this lobster video that I just described and uh, ties into some work that I'm doing outside of the permaculture realm uh, as I'm trying to figure out how to help my son navigate into his 20s, uh, you know, while I've got him in my life uh, as he's working through what it means to become an adult, uh, a grown man. And so I'm curious if you have any advice or feedback or resources that can help me to navigate this uh, with Rowan. And I'm sure the other dads out there that are trying to sort this out for their sons would be appreciative of any of those resources that you put in the comments down below. So thanks so much, folks. We'll see you guys all next week. Changes there, make the most of it. Might as well use it for your benefit.